Welcome back to Over 55. I'd like to introduce David Fisher, who is a partner at Learners. Hello, David. How are you? Fine, Ron. How are you doing? Great, thank you. Uh, interesting subject today, and I think uh, people will get a, lot, get a lot, take a lot away from this, uh, about wills and powers of attorney. There's so a lot, to, there's a lot to, to take from this subject. Well, this is good. Uh, I've known you for probably six years or more now. Uh, we met by chance. Uh, I had you do my will. So... I'm glad you said that. I can't, I can't, I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> well, uh, thank God I'm still here. And uh, you told We wouldn't me. be doing this without you. <laughs> That's true. It would be in effect right now. Yes. I think there was a lot that you taught me or showed me about wills that I didn't know. And I, I already had a will for years before I came and saw you. And you added a lot to the will. So maybe uh, you can say, well, what's the main reason why somebody should have a will? Well, the main reason why is if you don't have a will, the government is going to make a will for you. Uh, there is a section in the, in the Succession Law Reform Act which provides for what happens if you die without a will. And you really don't want the government determining what's going to happen with your will. Another significant factor is you want to make sure you choose the person to look after your estate whom you want. Correct. That's, that's very important. Right, yeah. I, I don't like the government taking, controlling what we do. That makes sense. And I guess with a will, uh, and then you, at least you can set it up at the beginning, right? You know what you're going, you have possessions, loved ones, friends that you would like to give something to, and rather than having the big fight at the end when you pass away. Well, that's right. And, and, and actually what happens is if there are any un unresolved matters with the family, you can be sure that, that they will be coming out uh, either at or during the funeral. I mean, I remember one case where where during the funeral, one of the, the deceased's children took a, a moving van, uh, backed it up to the, to the house, and cleaned out all the insides of the house. Just the whole content. <laughs> While well, everybody was at well, the funeral. While everybody was at the funeral. Oh, wow. So they, they sort of had their, uh, their uh, affairs in order. Which, which means, too, you might want to consider changing the locks in the, <laughs> in the, and people, in the house. And people, I, I know the, the, the finality of... of uh, Death, it's, it's a final thing that we uh, all going to face 100% one day. 100% of that. us will die. 100%, very good. I, we I, just I, don't know when. We don't, that's correct. So it's important that we line up, you know, especially if people have uh, children, for example, or they have heirlooms and they somebody should get the brooch or the pin and somebody gets the car. Uh, two properties, I guess that's also, uh, I, there's a lot into a will. Well, actually, personal effects, just, just mementos, souvenirs, Things that, that really don't have a large monetary value can be the can be the subject of of a huge fight. I mean, if two family members want the same article, how do you determine who gets what, or if they or if it just just should be sold and the proceeds divided up? Another big big area of, of division is is the family cottage. Oh yes, that's if, true. If if that's been in the family for many years. Who knows if that'll continue? I mean, y you always get somebody who promises to contribute to the to the cost of the cottage, but after death, uh, inevitably, that doesn't happen. Yeah, and it could be two children or three or four, uh, and somebody wants to keep the cottage because they've been going to the cottage all their lives, and the other ones just want to sell it because they're tired of going to the cottage and they want the money. So well, how that's I mean, right. this is the the things that have to be determined by, uh, I guess, the person that owns the cottage prior to. And then you have the situation where you have you've named more than one executor and they don't get along. Oh, now that that is really really difficult beca because if nothing gets done, and some people might not know you can have more than one executor. You can have one, two, three. You can have thirty-five executors. Mind you, I don't really <laughs> recommend thirty-five executors. No. It's a little bit <laughs> time-consuming. And, and but but I, I I guess the important thing is to get your affairs in order. That is the most important thing. And, and don't leave it until the week before you, you know, you pass on. Right. Um, that can be very expensive, for one thing. And also that can be the subject of, of somebody, con you know, contesting the will. Yeah, it, it's, uh, and, uh, you know, unfortunately everybody can be friendly until the person passes away and then there's all these possessions and uh, it might be your best brother or your sister or a family member, cousin, or, or just a friend. And uh, when it comes time to divvy it up, uh, it probably goes into the courts for years that uh, if you contest something that you felt you should have versus what I thought I should have. Uh, nobody wins, I hate to say what the lawyers, uh, but I guess Th the that's government That's true. As well. 
Well, and, and if you don't have a will, you're, al well, you're really allowing the government to dic dic dictate what the income tax consequences of your estate are, too. Right. Bet you people because don't people don't that. plan to save tax. They don't plan to save probate tax, probate fees. They don't plan to, to save administration fees, legal fees. Legal fees uh, are a necessary evil. You hear that from a lawyer. Right. It, it's a necessary evil. Okay. We're going to be right back with David, and we're going to go into talk about powers of attorney, which is another part of the will section. So uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. 